Around 2008, I heard a story on the radio news about a young man who was a rugby player who had been left quadriplegic after a terrible accident and who had persuaded his parents to take him to the Swiss Centre for assisted suicide. It wouldn't leave me, and I found over my writing career that if you have a story that won't leave the front of your head, that's what you need to write about. This is her baby. This book changed Jojo's life, and uh, it means the world to her and always has. These, and these characters, the character of, of Lou in particular, is one that she's carried around for a long time. So it was important to me that we got it right. The reason why I took the job and wanted to do the film was because I felt I understood who these characters were. And to have her there with me, either laughing at the way we decided Lou was going to do something or crying because we'd got the moment right meant everything. I pitched it to my then publishers, who were not very excited about it as the idea for a book. I wrote it in a year where we didn't have an income. I didn't have a book contract, and I wrote it anyway. My husband supported me. We took it to another publisher who loved it, and luckily for me, it just kind of took off. As soon as it was published, it just seemed to resonate with people. It's three years since it was published, and it sold, I think, something like five million copies around the world. Lots of people contact me by social media a lot, and they say it gave them a book hangover. They can't let go of the characters, and they can't let go of the ideas. But I think those two characters, I knew who they were the moment I started the book, and that very rarely happens. I've written 12, 13 books, and most of the time, you discover the character kind of two-thirds of the way through, and then you go back. It's not always easy. These two people, I wrote one scene, and the conversation they have was so clearly in my head about who those two people were that I could then put them in any single situation and know how they would react to each other. Up until now, I've never had the opportunity to play a character that is so close to myself. Unabashedly, unashamedly, klutzy. Very engaging to work collaboratively with both writers and actors. It's a privilege as a director to be able to take actors who are willing to go to those extremes to that place. This book has achieved a whole life of its own, and so you're really conscious that you have a responsibility to the fans because they are passionate about these two characters. You have to cut an awful lot because you can't have, you know, 450 pages of dialogue and a script. But trying to keep the essence of those two people, we felt, was the key thing, and to tell the story in a way that was faithful to the tone of the book as well. Amelia Clark. She's a nightmare. She's difficult. She never turns up on time. She never does anything you ask. She's completely, she's wayward. She just does it. As, no, she's not. She's amazing. My opinion was sought on the casting, and they showed me some of the auditions. But I have to say, as soon as I saw Amelia, she was the loo in my head. And it took me a moment, because I thought about her other part as, you know, Game of Thrones Khaleesi. I was like, how is that going to work? She's got such a beautiful arc, and everything that I've played up until this point has been, like, strong, powerful women. But with Lou, she just had such a sincerity and a charm and a kind of authenticity. Someone who's a bit of an idiot and British. There you go. I remember secretly texting the producer, and I just said, we found her. She was perfect. The most difficult thing was, of course, making sure that the chemistry was there. I wanted somebody who had warmth and charisma and an incredible kindness actually underneath that in order for the journey and his transformation to happen. And with Sam Claflin, we got that. It got me thinking more than anything. It opened my eyes up to a world I wasn't familiar with, with issues that I think are very rarely, if ever, talked about uh, openly. And I think it definitely poses a lot of questions and hopefully begins a few conversations. And I think that inevitably is a draw for me. And Sam, he was very slightly younger than the will in my head, and yet somehow now I can't remember the will in my head because Sam has taken him over. It doesn't matter how many times I sit there and repeat it in my head as I'm writing the script, when you hear an actor say it, they bring something completely different to it, and sometimes it's better. The casting process was long and arduous, and we were incredibly careful to try and get the right balance of people throughout the movie, and I'm thrilled with their performances across the board. Janet McTeer is somebody who I've dreamed of working with. People make assumptions on what they see like that. And I think one of the nice things I really liked about the film is that as you go through, you tear off the layers of what people have grown up with, and you see these people just for people. And at the end of the day, my character, who starts out quite scary, is actually she's just a mum. It really does take you somewhere new. It's proved to be difficult at times, but I think we've got through it together. 
I guess the thing I've decided, having watched what it becomes on screen, is that people are going to get something quite different out of it. They'll get the same story, they'll get the same characters, but like every creative medium, what we do is only 20%. What the audience will get out of it, they bring their own experiences, they bring their own prejudices and hopes and fears. Both in the script and in her book, Jojo managed to find a level where the difficult parts of the story are incredibly accessible. So it's all of these elements that grabbed me to begin with. Very recognizable themes. It's a strangely simple story. There is, of course, a very complicated part to it as well. It was a full package for me, and it was from the first time I read it.